Hello everyone, welcome to Daily News Analysis of Shankar Ace Academy. Today's date is 7th of June 2024. Displayed here are the articles that we are going to discuss today. As you can see, we have taken articles from different newspapers. So sit back, take your notes, let's get started. So first, we shall solve few previous questions. Look at this question about contempt of courts from 2022 previous question. Here, four statements are given and if you could eliminate third statement, you can almost arrive at the answer. The third statement says, The Constitution of India defines civil contempt and criminal contempt. This statement is incorrect because the Contempt of Courts Act 1971 defines both civil and criminal contempt and it is not defined in the Constitution. Here, civil contempt refers to willful disobedience to any judgment of the court, whereas criminal contempt can be invoked if an act tends to scandalize or lower the authority of the court or it tends to interfere with the due course of any judicial proceeding or obstruct the administration of justice. Now look at the fourth statement. In India, the parliament is vested with the powers to make laws on contempt of court. This statement is correct. So the correct answer is option B, 1, 2 and 4. Know that it is the power of the court to protect its own majesty and respect. The power is regulated but not restricted in the Contempt of Courts Act 1971. See, Contempt of Courts Act 1971 was passed on the recommendations of H. N. Sanyal Committee. Hence, the statement 1 is correct. Moving on, the Constitution of India empowers Supreme Court High Courts to punish for contempt of themselves. This is as per the Article 129 of the Constitution. High Courts also have the power to punish contempt for lower courts under their respective jurisdiction. This is as per Article 215 of the Indian Constitution. Hence, the statement 2 is correct. However, the degree of power given to Supreme Court is not equal to that of the High Court. Next question. With reference to India's project on connectivity, Consider the following statements. See, it's a straightforward and more factual question. Let's try to analyze each of the options individually before answering the question. First statement, East-West Corridor under Golden Quadrilateral Project connects Dibrugar and Surat. See, this statement is incorrect because the East-West Corridor is a part of National Highways Development Project that is NHDP in India which aims to connect Silchar in Assam to Porbandar in Gujarat. It does not connect Dibrugar in Assam and Surat in Gujarat. Then East-West Corridor is a 3300 kilometers length corridor. It passes via National Highway 27. Now coming to the second statement. Trilateral Highway connects Moray in Manipur and Chiang Mai in Thailand via Myanmar. See, this statement is also incorrect because the trilateral highway is a connectivity project that aims to connect Moray in Manipur with May Sot in Thailand via Myanmar. It is an important infrastructure project to enhance trade, connectivity and people-to-people -people ties among the three countries. Now, moving on to the third statement. Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar economic corridor connects Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh with Kunming in China. See, this statement is also incorrect because this BCIM is a proposed economic corridor that aims to connect Kuiming in China with Kolkata in India, passing through Myanmar and Bangladesh. See, Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh is not directly connected to this corridor. So, the correct answer for this question is option D, none. Now, we shall move on to see few important articles which were in news. Look at this science article from The Hindu. It states about a new discovery with respect to the causes of inflammatory bowel disease discovered. In this backdrop, let us see about the major causes, prevention and treatment for inflammatory bowel disease from the prelims perspective. So what is a inflammatory bowel disease? See, this disease is a chronic condition causing inflammation of the digestive tract. Its major symptoms are abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss and fatigue. Now let's see about their types. There are two main forms of inflammatory bowel disease. First one is Crohn's disease. See, it can affect any part of the digestive tract from mouth to anus. Inflammation can be patchy, meaning areas of healthy tissues can be interspersed with inflamed areas. It often affects the deeper layers of the bowel wall. Next main form is ulcerative colitis. It is limited to the inner lining that is mucosa of the larger intestine that is colon and rectum. The inflammation is continuous, affecting the entire colon in severe cases. Moving forward, let's see about its causes and prevention. See, the exact cause of inflammatory bowel disease is unknown, but it could be the result of a weakened immune system. Now, the possible causes are, first one, the immune system responds incorrectly to the environmental triggers such as viruses 
or bacteria which causes inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract next there also appears to be a genetic component someone with a family history of inflammatory bowel disease is more likely to develop this inappropriate immune response now coming to its symptoms see ibd causes a range of problems in the colon and rectum but it can also affect other parts of the body both the forms that we have seen earlier that is ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease are usually characterized by diarrhea rectal bleeding abdominal pain fatigue and weight loss people with ibd may experience flare ups followed by periods with no symptoms now talking about the the treatments although there is no curative treatment for ibd it's possible to reduce inflammation and address symptoms with variety of therapies ibd treatments may include medications surgery and a range of diet and lifestyle changes that help reduce inflammation and support the immune system so that's all about inflammatory bowel disease now let's move on to the next news article look at this article it talks about the recently identified case of human death associated with bird flu that is h5n5 with this backdrop let us understand about the basics of h5n5 from the prelims perspective so what is bird flu see the bird flu which is also known as an avian influenza refers to infection of birds with avian influenza type a viruses see there are four types of influenza viruses type a b c and d influenza a viruses infect humans and many different animals there are many chances for emergence of a new and very different influenza a virus with the ability to infect people and having sustained human to human transmission if such a thing happens then it can cause an influenza pandemic see the influenza type a viruses are classified into subtypes according to the combinations of different virus surface proteins hemagglutinin and neuraminidase so far there are 18 different hemagglutinin subtypes and 11 different neuraminidase subtypes depending on the origin host influenza a viruses can be classified as avian influenza swine influenza or other types of animal influenza viruses for example avian influenza bird virus subtypes are a h5n1 and a h9n2 similarly swine influenza or swine flu virus subtypes are a h1n1 and a h3n2 all of these animal influenza type a viruses are distinct from human influenza viruses and do not easily transmit among humans but still there is a chance of transmission now where do they occur see these viruses occur naturally among wild aquatic birds worldwide and can infect domestic poultry and other birds and animal species so aquatic birds are the primary natural reservoir for most subtypes of influenza a viruses see even though wild aquatic birds can be infected with avian influenza a viruses in their intestines and respiratory tract but usually do not get sick however avian influenza a viruses are very contagious among birds and some of these viruses can sicken and even kill certain domesticated bird species including chickens ducks and turkeys now talking about its symptoms see most cause asymptomatic or mild infection in birds where the range of symptoms depends on the virus properties viruses that cause severe disease in poultry and result in high death rates are called highly pathogenic avian influenza that is hpai viruses that cause mild disease in poultry are called low pathogenic avian influenza that is lpai so moving forward let's see about it prevention and treatment preventing bird flu involves several key measures these include avoiding contact with infected birds ensuring proper cooking of poultry products practicing good hygiene like frequent hand washing and using protective gear when handling birds monitoring and controlling outbreaks in poultry farms through vaccination and culling of infected birds are crucial public health education on recognizing symptoms and prompt reporting of suspected cases also helps in preventing the spread of bird flu among human and birds treatment for bird flu includes antiviral medications like oseltamivir or tamiflu and zanamivir or relenza supportive care including oxygen therapy and fluids is essential world health organization recommends early treatment isolation of patients and preventive antiviral use for exposed individuals to control outbreaks and prevent severe illness so this is all about h5n5 with this let us move on to the next news article look at this article last month 
a tragic fire broke out in a private neonatal care nursing home in Delhi. This incident sparked intense media coverage and political blame games. The media incorrectly reported that many nursing homes in Delhi operate without a license. However, the incident has quickly been forgotten even though the parents of the victim are still grieving. These tragedies often lead to questions about who's to blame but the real issue is usually a systematic failure in this case a failure of healthcare regulations so in our discussion let us understand the key issues in the healthcare system in india and then we can also discuss the measures that can be taken to improve it now we shall begin with the key issues in the indian healthcare system first important issue is the fragmented regulatory framework the indian healthcare system operates under the fragmented regulatory framework involving multiple bodies at the central and state levels there are various regulatory bodies like ministry of health and family welfare the national medical commission and the drug controller general of india and state health departments this often leads to overlapping jurisdictions inconsistent enforcement of regulations and gaps in policy implementation so the lack of a unified national regulatory body undermines the efficiency of healthcare governance the second important issue is licensing and accreditation issues The process for licensing and aggregation of healthcare facilities is cumbersome and inconsistent across states. Many healthcare providers operate without proper licenses and there is often a lack of stringent checks and balances. This was highlighted by the recent fire incident in a neonatal care nursing home in New Delhi where regulatory oversights led to devastating consequences. The third issue is quality of care. There is a significant disparity in the quality of healthcare services provided across the country urban centers often have better facilities and more qualified healthcare professionals compared to the rural areas the absence of standardized protocols and the enforcement of quality benchmarks contribute to this inconsistency compromising patient safety and care outcomes fourthly inadequate public health funding india's public health expenditure remains one of the lowest among major economies this underfunding leads to insufficient infrastructure inadequate staffing and a lack of essential medical supplies in the public health institutions the overburdened public health system forces many patients to seek expensive private health care thereby widening a gap between rich and poor for example if you take the recent news about the death of many babies in delhi many public hospitals and primary health care centers in india lack adequate infrastructure many private hospitals are not following the proper safety guidelines for example a significant number of primary health care centers do not have a functional labor rooms delivery beds or basic amenities such as running water and electricity this severely limits their ability to provide safe and hygiene childbirth services these are the important issues regarding healthcare in india now let us discuss the measures that can be taken to mitigate these issues first one is significantly increasing the percentage of gdp allocated to public health expenditure this is to ensure adequate funding for infrastructure staffing and medical supplies next one is upgrading and modernizing existing public health facilities including primary health centers community health centers and district hospitals third one is expanding telemedicine services this is to bridge the gap in the healthcare access in remote areas next one is develop efficient and transparent supply chain to ensure the timely delivery of essential medicines equipments and supplies to public health facilities next one is implementing a robust electronic health records that is ehr system to improve patient care data management and health planning next one is enforcing strict ethical standards and practices in private health care to prevent exploitation and ensure patient safety then expanding schemes like ayushman bharat to provide health insurance coverage to a larger section of the population this is to provide universal health coverage then developing a regulatory framework for private hospitals that includes guidelines for fire safety electrical safety and overall infrastructural safety next conducting regular safety inspections to ensure compliance with safety regulations and standards in the private hospitals so these are about the measures that can be taken to improve the efficiency and safety of the healthcare system in india finally we must refrain from political loose talk and sensational media headlines to prevent increasing mistrust of doctors and nursing homes which can lead to violence against 
ஹெல்த் கேர் ப்ரொவைடர்ஸ் வி மஸ்ட் ப்ரொமோட் சிங்கிள் டாக்டர் கிளினிக் அண்ட் ஸ்மாலர் ஹெல்த் கேர் ஃபெசிலிட்டிஸ் அஸ் தே டெலிவர் குவாலிட்டி ப்ரைமரி கேர் அண்ட் கேன் கீப் ஹெல்த் கேர் காஸ்ட் lower in response to the fire tragedy in delhi we must focus on finding and eliminating the root causes of such incidents rather than just addressing the symptoms so that's all about this article with this let us move on to the next one look at this article it highlights the varied voting patterns in india's 2024 elections across different regions of the country these key findings are from the lokniti csds post poll study which shows distinct behavior among urban town and rural voters in india so firstly with respect to cities in larger urban centers the bjp maintained strong support with 38% of city dwellers voting for them while the congress received 23% despite a slight decline in the congress support by 2% their allies gained significantly compensating for this loss notably among the urban poor the bjp and the congress received 38% and 22% of the votes respectively secondly with respect to rural areas here the bjp also retained significant support with 37% of the rural poor compared to 21% for the congress in the village overall 36% voted for the bjp while 20% voted for the congress note that here also the congress allies also saw a slight increase in rural support thirdly with respect to towns know that the voters in town contributed to the most to the congress improved performance the congress secured an additional 7% in towns whereas the bjp lost 3% moreover the coalition partners of congress also fared better in the towns compared to the bjp now let us see the overall interference of the study see the overall impact of spatial voter distribution was more pronounced for the congress than the bjp the congress saw substantial gains in towns while the bjp's support remained relatively stable across urban and rural areas the study also revealed that the bjp's appeal in rural regions persisted despite issues like agrarian unrest though their performance varied significantly by state now let us see the factors which influenced these trends there are urban initiatives like smart city project which had likely bolstered bjp's support among some city dwellers however issues like unemployment and inadequate civic infrastructure possibly limited their broader urban appeal in rural areas despite facing agrarian challenges the bjp managed to maintain a stronger voter base so these are all the key findings of the study now let us see the trends of the selection by comparing it with previous election according to the election commission of india the just concluded lok sabha election saw a total voter turnout of 65.79% see this was lower compared to the final voter turnout in the 2019 election which stood at 67.40% on comparing state wise lakshadweep recorded the highest voter turnout with 84% followed by assam with 81% the lowest turnout was recorded in bihar at 56.19% uttar pradesh with 56.92% and mizoram with 56.87% moreover there was a noticeable increase in voter turnout in 2024 this was driven by targeted campaigns and social media engagement as per the official data by election commission of india the total count of voters in the lok sabha elections in 2024 will be 96.8 crores also there were around 1.8 crore first time voters and 19.47 crore voters between the age of 20 to 29 moreover urban areas showed more varied voting patterns in 2024 reflecting diverse issues and candidate profiles while the rural areas focused on local leadership and agrarian issues so this is all about the discussion with this let us move on to the next news article look at this article it highlights the significant role that social welfare schemes has played in influencing voter behavior in india particularly with respect to 2024 elections so in this context let us revise few facts relevant for the examination using our mains answer writing part using our mains answer writing practice see this topic can be asked in gs paper 2 let me read out the question for you discuss the impact of social welfare schemes on voter behavior in india with reference to recent elections since the keyword is discuss you are expected to give various perspectives of the subject with supporting data so in the main body of the answer 
and give your views and then you can oppose it and give your views finally in the conclusion part we are going to end the answer with a balanced view so this is how we are going to address this particular question so moving on to the introduction part here you can write that according to the directive principles of state policy outlined in part 4 of the indian constitution india is a welfare state this means that one of its primary components is the welfare scheme welfare schemes aim to improve the well-being and quality of life for citizens often focusing on vulnerable or disadvantaged populations however in the dynamic landscape of indian politics the role of social welfare schemes has become increasingly significant in shaping voter behavior some of its impacts in voting behavior are as follows so this way you can give a connection between the introduction and the main body part of the answer moving on to the first part of the body here you can write about the impact of social welfare schemes on voting behavior first one is welfare schemes can create a strong symbolic and emotional connection with voters particularly among marginalized communities for example welfare schemes like pradhan mantri kisan samman nidhi which is pm kisan provides financial assistance to farmers this has significantly bolstered support for the bharatiya janata party in the 2024 general elections states like uttar pradesh where the scheme was actively promoted substantial voter turnout in favor of the bjp secondly the effective implementation of welfare schemes can enhance the perception of good governance influencing voter behavior positively for example aam aadmi party in delhi has gained traction through its focus on health and education this is evident in the mohalla clinics initiative and improvements in public schools these measures contributed to aam aadmi party's overwhelming victory in the 2020 delhi assembly elections thirdly the introduction of targeted schemes like ujwala yojana which provides free lpg connections to women from below poverty line this has been instrumental in securing votes from female voter bloc the bjp's success in rural and semi urban areas in the 2019 general elections can be partially attributed to such schemes this suggests that politicians may use welfare schemes for political gain manipulating them to secure votes rather than implementing them based on genuine developmental needs finally the prolonged reliance on welfare may foster a culture of dependency discouraging self reliance and individual initiative among recipients for example a farmer might take an excessive loan just with the hope that his or her loan will be waived off if a particular party comes to power similar thing happens with the education loan so you can write these points in the first part of the answer moving on to the second part here you should write that the social welfare schemes does not have any impact on voter behavior first point is voters often consider a broader range of factors beyond welfare schemes when casting their ballots in turn governance quality leadership and broader policy agendas play significant role for example while the bjp's ujwala scheme was well received its electoral success in 2019 was also contributed to other factors such as national security and leadership image suggesting that welfare schemes alone are not decisive the 2024 elections saw a significant increase in young voters with 1.8 crore first time voters and 19.47 crore voters aged 22 29 this demographic is more concerned with issues like employment opportunities education and digital infrastructure than with religious identities this shift in focus suggests that voters are pragmatic and prioritize pressing economic concerns over welfare schemes when making electoral decisions similarly in rural areas agrarian concerns including crop prices subsidies and rural employment play a crucial role the influence of local leaders addressing these issues further demonstrate that voting behavior is driven by practical concerns rather than religious sentiments finally social justice and environmental concerns gained more prominence in 2024 reflecting changing political priorities and global trends this can be witnessed from growing female voter ratio and first time female voters in the 2024 elections so you can write these points in the second part of the answer now moving on to the conclusion part here you can write that the relationship between social welfare schemes and voting behavior in india is characterized by a complex interplay of factors while some evidence suggests that voters may not harbor significant 
sentiment towards parties that inaugurate welfare schemes contrasting view points highlight that enduring impacts of such initiatives on electoral outcomes so this can be your conclusion so that's all about the main chance selecting practice now we shall move on to the prelims practice question discussion look at the question which of the following statements is correct with respect to avian influenza they are classified into subtypes based on the virus proteins that is hemagglutinin and neuraminidase yes this statement is correct next they do not infect humans or animals see this statement is incorrect because it does affect humans and animals like swine horse and dogs next statement it naturally spreads and affects multiple internal organs of birds yes this statement is correct so the answer is option d both a and c next question consider the following statements regarding autoimmune disease first statement autoimmune diseases occur when the immune system mistakenly attacks the body's own tissues yes this statement is correct next rheumatoid arthritis and type 1 diabetes are examples of autoimmune diseases yes this statement is also correct next autoimmune diseases are exclusively caused by genetic factors this statement is incorrect because they are not exclusively caused by genetic factors rather there are also environmental factors and infections also play a role so the correct answer is option a 1 and 2 only displayed here is the mains practice question for you today understand the question and try to answer it in the comment section with this we come to the end of this news article discussion if you like the video do like share and subscribe to shankar ace academy now thank you so much for watching